Wow, that's one of the best five-piece rock and roll bands in history, in my opinion. Since we're talking about the number five, let's take a look at five unique woodworking gadgets that I found for my shop. So let's not waste any time and get right to it. So we got a lot of cool tools to take a look at today. One of these tools was recommended by you guys, and another one of these is something that I use at my day job, and I think it's got some woodworking applications. Well, my first question for you today is, do you have an Amazon account? Well, if you do, I'm sure you're very familiar with all the recommendations that Amazon puts together for you based on your purchase history. And I'm sure you can imagine from having this channel, I get a lot of recommendations for woodworking gadgets. And this first woodworking gadget that we're gonna take a look at is one that has been recommended to me for months until I finally caved in. So what is this tool? Well, let's go check it out over at the assembly table. So this is the item that we're going to be taking a look at first today. In order to be able to tell you what the name of this item is, I need to refer back to my purchase history. This is a 3D Woodworking Tools multi-angle measuring ruler, square size woodworking rulers, three-dimensional items measuring gift for carpenters with center scribing marking tool. Well, that sure is a mouthful. Sounds like this tool can do a lot of things. So let's go see what it can do. So first off, let's take a look at the construction of this tool. This tool is made of aluminum and it's got markings on both faces of the tool. It's got markings for measurements, angles, and it even has holes for scribing lines. So this tool comes in imperial and metric, so depending on which scales you use, this tool can accommodate it. Since I don't have a whole lot of metric tools, I chose to go with metric on this one. So the first thing that I like about this tool is it's got a wide face on both sides. This gives it all sorts of stability as you rest it against the edge of your workpiece and run it up and down. If we look at the first face of this tool, you can see there's little holes that allow you to scribe lines for each millimeter going from zero all the way up to 55 millimeters. If we push the tool down, you can also see there's an angle finder with notches cut out at 30, 45, and 60 degrees. If we continue to look at the first side, you can see there's a ruler on the very edge of the tool that goes from zero all the way up to 155 millimeters. This ruler also has a lip so you can rest it against the edge of your workpiece so that you can get really accurate markings. There's also another ruler that's perpendicular to the first ruler that allows you to make tick marks before you go ahead and scribe out your lines. And that's only one face of this tool. There's another face that we need to take a look at that's really got some unique features. The first thing that you'll notice is there's another angle finder on this face that also has the 30, 45, and 60 degree hash marks. But you can see along the edge of this tool, there's even more angles that this thing can accommodate. It goes from zero degrees at the very top of the tool, running down all the angles with a hash mark at each degree, going all the way up to 90 degrees. If we continue to look at the face of this tool, you can also see there's a little hash mark that allows you to make tick marks anywhere from five millimeters all the way up to 45 millimeters. Next to that, there's two holes that allow you to create markings for dovetails at the one to seven ratio or the one to five ratio. Lastly, at the very top of this tool, you'll see little holes, and this is actually a drill bit gauge. This will be perfect for me as these are in metric. So if I have an imperial drill bit, I can figure out which metric size is the closest to my imperial. So what's the damage on this beauty? Well, this thing is less than $17. So if you work in something like Imperial, this might be a great tool to get in metric so that you have something you can reference that's in metric when you need it. Or if you're in metric, you might wanna get an Imperial one of these so that you can have a handy tool that you can go back and forth between the measurements without a whole lot of effort. Who uses metric? Every single country on the planet except for us, Liberia and Burma. Wow, really? Yep. Cause you never think of those other two as having their together. Well, that was a lot of features for our first tool. Our second tool also has a lot of features, but in a different way. And this next tool is one that I had no idea about, and I didn't have to Google deep for it as a couple of you guys suggested that I check it out. So we've talked a lot on this channel. If we ever have the opportunity to use our workpiece as a measuring device, we should use that versus the tape measure. And that's because no one is perfect. With every cut we make, we're making a little bit of an adjustment to the measurement that we originally intended. And all these little cuts compound in the end. And that's why if you use your workpiece as a measuring device, you know that your final cuts are gonna fit perfectly into whatever you're making. And that's what this next tool is about, accuracy and precision. So what is this next tool? Well, let's go check it out. So this little box contains the Easy Woodshop extendable measuring device. Let's open this box and see what it's all about. So I'm not quite sure how this box got damaged as I totally caught it on my first try. But if we open the box, you can see there's some instructions and a couple of extendable sticks. Let's talk about how this works. So inside the box, you get two larger 46 inch extendable measuring sticks, 
along with a smaller 10 inch extendable measuring stick that kind of looks like a magic wand. So along with the three different measuring sticks, you actually get three different types of attachments. You have a flat end cap, which I have installed on this measuring stick. You have a pointer, which I have installed on this measuring stick. And you also have an extender, which I'll show you how to use in just a moment. So what exactly are these measuring sticks used for? Well, they're basically an adjustable story pole. This allows you to use your workpiece as a reference versus using a tape measure. So let's take a look at those attachments and see how we can use these sticks in our shop. So the first attachment we're gonna take a look at is the attachment with the flat end caps. So let's say I wanna figure out the difference between the top of this router cabinet and the bottom of the router cabinet. All I need to do is to take my extendable measuring stick and place it in between those two items. Then I can remove my measuring stick and mark my wood. <laughs> wood. <laughs> By resting my measuring stick on the piece that I wanna cut and making sure the end is completely flush, I can strike my line where I wanna make the cut. Then I can go over to the miter saw and make my cut based on that line. And just like that, I have a piece that perfectly fits inside that gap. So what an excellent way to really hone into those measurements without having to use a tape measure. But what if we have a measurement that's beyond the 46 inches of this larger extendable measuring stick? Well, that's where our extension accessory comes into play. Let me show you how it works. So this is the extension accessory. All we need to do is unscrew these end caps and install the extension. So just like that, we've doubled the length of these extendable marking sticks. And with these sticks fully extended with a tape measure next to them, we can figure out how wide they really go. And hopefully you can see here they go about 92 and a half inches wide, which is almost eight feet wide. So this should be able to accommodate almost any measurement you need. But there's one more attachment. Remember I said there's that little pointy thingy? Well, let's take a look and see what that does. So in this case, I'm gonna remove the extender from one of these extendable measuring sticks. I'm also gonna remove the end cap. Then I'm gonna install both of these pointy thingies on each side. So before we use that measuring stick with the points, I wanna remind everybody how we check a box for square. We simply line our tape measure diagonally on either corner and figure out the measurement. Then we take the opposite diagonal and make sure that those two measurements are the same. And that can be a little tricky to hook your tape measure on the corner of those boxes just to make sure that each measurement is exactly the same. And that's where this tool is gonna to come into play. So instead of fighting our tape measure and having it hang off the edge of our box, we can instead take the extendable measuring stick and measure the interior of our box. By placing each point in the corner, we can take a measurement of one corner, remove it, and place it in the other corner. And as you can see from this measurement, it's a little bit short. So this box is out of square. And that's just three of the uses of these sticks. I'm sure there's a ton I'm missing, but those are the three that these sticks are mainly used for. If you have any other ideas for these sticks, make sure you leave a comment and let us all know so that we can learn from you. On the stick. Well, that's our first two items of the day. Before we move on to our third, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It truly does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for any of the gadgets that we're taking a look at today and many of the tools that I have in my shop, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out those tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our third item. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen a lot of YouTube channels featuring bow feather boards. And there's a reason for that. Frankly, these feather boards are some of the best I've ever seen. And I even have a couple of these in my shop. And the reason that these are so popular is because of this hard foam and the unique design of the feathers. This greatly reduces kickback. They're also very popular because the foam is removable and if you ever get a nick in the foam, you can simply replace it and add a new piece of foam. And you also know if you saw my video a couple of weeks ago that they also make push sticks with that same hard foam. And this foam is reversible and replaceable which is really nice because if you have a push stick that you cut into, you simply have to throw away the push stick versus just replacing the tip. There's a joke in there somewhere. Now, if you saw my video a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that I featured this longer bow push stick, which is quite nice because it keeps your hand away from the blade. But sometimes you want a little bit smaller push stick. Well, does bow make a smaller push stick? Well, the answer is yes. 
And because of this, I ended up purchasing the smaller one as well. So if we compare the two bow push sticks, you can see that the smaller one is very similar to the one that I've been using for years. See, the smaller ones are about 12 inches long, while the longer one is about 18 inches long. And having the ability to switch from going from a longer push stick to a smaller push stick is really nice depending on the size of the wood I'm cutting through. Another nice thing about these push sticks is they use the exact same tips. So these tips are interchangeable and you can use either tip with either push stick. Therefore, even though they're two different sizes, you use the exact same foam padding for either stick. Another nice thing about having two different size push sticks is you can use them in tandem with each other if you're dealing with an awkward size workpiece. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about this push stick as we talked about the longer one a couple of weeks ago. I will mention that you get two of the replacement pads for about $5. So now that we've taken a look at three amazing items so far, I want to start talking about our fourth item. But before we do that, we need to start talking about dust collection. So I've tried to do as much as possible to try to reduce the sawdust in my shop, as well as the particles of sawdust in the air. Let me take you around the shop and show you some of the dust collection that I currently have installed. First and foremost, I've got this big boy. This is my main dust collector, and not only does it collect dust, but it also filters the air. My second main dust collector, which I use for sanding and over at the table saw, is this Festool dust collector. And as you can see from this hose right here, it's actually connected to a boom. At the center of my shop, I've got this boom arm, and this can maneuver almost anywhere in the center of my shop. You can see at the very top of the boom arm, I've got my dust collection hose. At the very end is the end of the hose that I can either attach to my table saw or things like my sanders. Now I learned how to make this dust collection boom arm by watching Lincoln Street Woodwork. So if you haven't checked this channel out, go give them a look. I've also got this big guy up here that helps with air filtration and smaller particulates in my shop. My miter saw also has a dedicated dust collector just for this tool. I also have about three or four of these rigid dust collectors that are attached to things like my sander, my router table, my dado table saw, as well as my original DeWalt miter saw. But as I said, there's still sawdust in corners and nooks and crannies in my shop. And that's where this next item comes into play. So we're going old school for this one. This is the old fashioned horsehair brush as well as the dustpan. You see, if you've ever been to Home Depot, Lowe's or Walmart and tried to get a dust pail, you're looking at something like this or this. But this is a big dog and big dogs need to eat. This is a 17 inch dust pail. And the only reason that I'm bringing up these two items is frankly, I thought this was stupid. I've spent thousands of dollars on dust collection, but I didn't shell out the 17 to $20 for the horsehair brush and the larger dust pail. And I've noticed a marked difference in the dust in my shop just by cleaning out those corners and crevices that my dust collection just doesn't address. I'm bunghead, he's crevice. <laughs> We're extra strange students. So go ahead and spend the 20 bucks to get a larger dust pail and a horsehair brush and you'll notice the difference too. Well that's four items down and only one left to take a look at. Now this next item is something that I thought might be useful in our shop after seeing it being used at work. And this thing is a marking tool. It's a marking tool for when you're rough cutting your lumber. And I personally have never seen this writing utensil used by a woodworker. If you have, let me know. See, the main writing utensils that I mainly use in my shop are these four right here. I usually start off with a Sharpie or the Fat Boy and then move over to a mechanical pencil. But when I was at work the other day, I saw somebody using a writing utensil that I had basically forgotten about. What is this writing device? Well, let's go check it out. So this is a black china marker. What is a black china marker? Well, it's essentially a wax pencil. And the nice thing about a wax pencil is it can mark on glass, plastic, film, paper, metal, rubber, and even wood. So let's test out this writing utensil on a couple of surfaces. The first surface I want to test this out on is a piece of rough cut walnut. So here I've got a couple of pieces of walnut from the sawmill. You can see there's a lighter walnut as well as a darker walnut. And if we take our pen, you can see that I can write easily on this walnut. Even the darker walnut shows up really easily. Now I've been using this wax pencil for a couple of days now and not only does it write very easily, but it also sands off very easily, which is really good to know once you get to the finishing stages. So obviously wood is going to be the primary use for this pencil, but we can really use this on any smooth surface in our shop. 
So we can actually use this pencil on the cast iron of our table saw. We can make a mark where we want our cut to be, then we can line up our workpiece and make repetitive cuts. Once we're done, we can take our finger and simply remove that marking. In the same fashion, you can do this over at the miter saw, or you could use it over at the router table, where you could mark the beginning and the end of plunge cuts. Once you're done, you can simply remove the markings with your finger. So although this last gadget may be the most simple one, this might be the one that I use the most. Well, that's gonna do us for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed checking out these five new gadgets for my shop. Once again, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.